Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. All right. We got Matt Berry with us here today in the Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. And I'm already pumped about all the guests that we have. Uh, we're going to have Antonio Davis a little bit later. And I think it's a great little storytelling piece because sometimes you just do this thing, right? We're going to talk Kyrie today. We're going to talk LeBron. What's up with the Cavs? How much doubt did you have or do you have now, Matt? But remember, almost 20 years ago, uh, the Pacers went to a Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals with the third championship team of the second repeat. So the last Bulls title Mm -hmm. in 98, well, they actually had to play a Game 7 against Antonio Davis with MJ and all those dudes. So we're going to do some story time with him. Peter Rosenberg is also going to join us a little bit later because he had the audacity to suggest that Kyrie Irving, not just better than Scottie Pippenberry, much better. So you're not even you're not even willing to let it marinate for a minute before we make him sound like an absolute fool on radio. Like no. you're not you're not willing to say you know what Kyrie's pretty damn good. Um, and you're not willing to consider that maybe Pippen was a product of his era and his team. I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking. Like, I don't. Is it that ridiculous? I'm sifting through Rosenberg's oh, reach right now. Tonight, and I'm, yeah. I'm trying to like, you know, we got a Kaepernick take here. We got a wrestling one. But this is all good for him. I mean, this is this is good, and he's been following it up. And then he doubled down after kind of dissing Pippen by saying, "And by while we're here, Soundgarden ain't that good either." So he's hot take right. guy. Like yeah. he's he's. He's hot take. Let me rile up Twitter, have people yell things about me, and then eventually I'll get booked on Rosillo's show to talk about it. And that's exactly what we did because he turned into the Internet's most hated man. And it wasn't just because he suggested Kyrie could be better than Scottie Pippen. I think it was the, the – you can't ever do that. Hey, you know who's marginally better? This guy over this guy. It has to be – and by the way, I think Pippen's the loser. You triple down on it. Right. You like just, you, you, you just, go all in. Right. So here's the reason we're even doing this is because the Cavs win – Game four last night, 112-99. They beat the Celts. The Celts are terrific for the first half, first half plus. I was even sending out tweets going, I'm about two quarters away from wondering if the Cavs are bad again now. And then Kyrie Irving, after LeBron picks up his fourth foul, Mm -hmm. which is not like it doesn't happen, it's never happened, where he'd have four before the half. And Kyrie goes crazy in the third quarter, 19 points in a 448 stretch with layups, two threes, a free throw, Holsters back with the guns, celebrating, and now the Cavs are up in the series, and all seems okay. And we see this out of Kyrie. He'll go in bunches. He'll have nice games, and then he'll absolutely just blow up in a game and give you that sense of, oh, this guy is a legitimate top-flight player in this league. Last night, though, if you're watching the game, there there were two things that developed for me watching the Cavs. Number one, they blow the 21-point lead in the prior game. They lose the game to the Celtics. All of a sudden, people are freaking out. But then last night, they're down 16. And so this is the second consecutive game where we've seen something out of the Cavs we hadn't seen in the 10 playoff games prior, okay, which so was just dominance and an ability to get themselves out of situations. If I'm hearing you correctly, then, you could give them a pass for Game 3, but where you were at last night, you look at them differently, even with the win after Game 4. I give them a pass for Game 3, but what I'm looking at now is after what we saw in Game 3, and we were sitting there on Sports Center, and you were out there, and we were talking about over-under points for LeBron James. 15, I believe, was the line in Vegas of how bad the Cavs are going to beat the Celtics in Game 4 because they were just going to be ticked off about, about the prior game. I just didn't see that. And when they dig themselves a 16-point hole, then you're thinking, well, what, what happened? What why is are, this? Why, why are we now right. seeing this again? And so I questioned a little bit why they were letting a Boston Celtics team that hadn't been in this series the first two games to get up on them for 16 points. But at the end of the day, and, th- and that's why I love the Antonio Davis segment coming up, we're talking about a Michael Jordan team that was regarded as one of the greatest of all time, and even they got taken to seven games. So as good as the Cavs are, It's okay to get messed with in the playoffs because it's the playoffs and the Eastern Conference Finals. And, oh, by the way, the Celtics are the top seed in the East. And, yeah, Isaiah Thomas is good, but they're a complete team. Kyrie Irving, 42 last night. LeBron ended up with 34, five boards, six assists. Ends up with the four fouls. But the the fact that he had those four fouls, and I thought they were fouls. Maybe maybe one's borderline. It's just so weird because he's done such a great job throughout his career not picking up a bunch of fouls. And I don't think that's because refs are always protecting him. I think some people are smart at it and some people are not. And he's a smart player and everything else. So how could he not figure out how to prevent himself from getting personal fouls? Last night was not the case. Kyrie in the zone last night, dropping 42 in his team's 112-99 victory over the Celts. 
in game for the Eastern Conference Finals. In the Zone is brought to you by AutoZone. Drive the new Duralast GT brake pads, proven tough from the tracks to the streets, and sold only at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Here's Kyrie after the win. In the back of my mind, I was like, uh, and I'm saying to myself, saying to myself, we cannot, they cannot tie up this series. They cannot. We cannot go to Boston 2 2 and then, um, you know, it becomes almost an even series. Um, and for us, uh, our focus level has to be at an all time high. And the little things that matter, that's going to make the difference within the game. Uh, you saw Kevin doing it, being a man down low. Um, Tristan, JR giving us some great minutes. Richard Jefferson, Darren, Kyle. Everybody's effort. We needed everything tonight. I'll answer the question then I asked you. Okay. Because at one point, I'm going, all right, the game three thing didn't bother me at all. And because of what Golden State's doing in the West, the Cavs have to keep pace with that. It has to keep pace with that for the conversation to still feel like the Cavs have a chance. I go to the cafeteria this morning. The Cavs, again, win last night in Game 4. I'm walking down to the calf, on-air people, behind-the-scenes people. Everybody's going, oh, well, Golden State's just going to go ahead and sweep them. Right. I am not there yet, despite what I saw in Game 3 and what it took to get out of Game 4 against an Isaiah thomas list Celtics team. And I am not one of those guys that looks at the Celtics saying, this proves now in the two games you should move on from Isaiah. No. You may want to move on for Isaiah because of cost and other things, but not because he's actually detrimental to this year's team. But I'm at a do-not-know place. Hey, I don't know. I don't know if the Cavs defense is all of a sudden better than we saw in the regular season. I thought it was really good in Game 1. And I thought Game 2, I don't even know what to do with Game 2. I don't look at, hey, I really like their pin-down screens. Right. It was, it was disgusting sided one-sided basketball game on that Friday night in Boston where the Cavs absolutely blew them out. So as I'm kind of sifting through all this and going, how do I open the show today? I'm telling you, I don't know. I'm not more down on the Cavs because I maybe should be. I'm not telling you, oh, Golden State's absolutely going to sweep them as good as I think they are. I'm at kind of this do not know phase because I wasn't that impressed with their first two opponents. I don't think the Celtics are all that great either, despite being a one seed. And I, I, I've been saying this now for about a month, Matt. I'm just not going to know anything until we get like two games into the NBA Finals, and at that point it might be too late. It's just interesting how quickly we forget what we were saying about the the Cavs during the regular season. Because they had a stretch where they would lose three games in a row, four games in a row. They were giving up 120-plus points. the Hawks game? And we're piling on. Like the Cavs are done. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't good. And then they get to the playoffs and they flip the switch. So what's the conversation changed to? Oh, see, LeBron was making a mockery of the regular season. This is when it really counts. But I, the, well, I think some of that is true. I think some of it's true as well. But I think over the last two games, we've seen a little bit what we saw out of them in the regular season. And it's just so far removed from our mindset. We forget that this team does, in fact, have deficiencies, number one. And number two, the East just isn't that good. Which, again, is troubling for me. When you, About the, So you are, are you a sweep guy? Are you the Warriors are going to sweep them even no, more not, so because the last two games? No, because okay. I'm, I'm the, I believe LeBron James is a once-in-a-generational-type professional athlete, and you get him on the biggest stage, and he's got the powers to flip the switch at any given time. Weber thought perhaps he'd be tired. Uh -oh. The question tomorrow after Game 3 and 4 is, is LeBron tired? Now that was after the missed dunk on what is one of the great outlet passes you will ever see anyone ever throw. The fact that Kevin Love was that tangled up with somebody, and he gets up way above the rim. You guys all know that have listened to the show where I'm at with the rest talk. How do you play eight games in 37 days and now four games into the Eastern Conference Finals? If you're tired now, then when are you not tired? And by the way, the missed dunk, like when I was the listening, I'm going, tomorrow, well, who's going to say three this? And four four is, is LeBron tired? Can we not make mistakes anymore and not have it be a result of something? Well, he was LeBron sick in game three was the other new one. Yeah, but can he not? can LeBron or any athlete just not have a bad game? There are no, players in every sport. Him. Mike Trout will go 0 for 4. Jordan Spieth has been playing awful. You can have a bad night, week, whatever, and not have it be the stomach flu or be tired. It's okay. You can, I love it. I'd love that to have still you, be positive. Have you ever had a show that you were just bad? Yeah. What happened that day? Was it, were, you, were you just bad? It's usually not because of preparation or what I did the night before because I don't really, like, you know me when it's a school night. Yeah, you're you're out. You're not right, doing anything. Right. You're just, you're but I sometimes I just show up and then I get in the car and I drive home at four or whatever and I go, you know what? You suck today. And that's okay. Yeah. No one's gonna sit here and be like, you know what, Rosillo ate bad ESPN cafeteria food before the show. Well, the food's always great. So we have trained chefs over there.
All right, I want to field Yates. He's going to join us. What's the deal with this Gronk thing? And he's also going to help us understand something else here. Uh, picking sides in public spats. We all kind of do it, right? Famous people. Have to. Katy Perry, T-Sizzle, who started it. I care just as much as you guys do. But can someone who at one point got busted in a police chase with weed and a kid and a gun can that person actually make a really good point and you want to take his side? We'll figure that out next. Matt Berry, The Rosillo Show at ESPN Radio. Field Yates to help us with what's going on with Kaepernick's visit at Seattle. Breaking news, ESPN.com. Right now, it's going to be in about 15 minutes where Kaepernick apparently is going to visit with Seahawks, see what could happen there. Gronk also has a brand new deal with the Pats, at least for this season. we got Matt Berry with us today. The Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Time for Straight Talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Just real quick, because you're an Arizona State guy, um, Arizona State's presence on Instagram, these girls can't possibly be just out of college or in college, right? They're all there. They're all in Tempe, walking the campus, walking Palm Walk. It's why no one... What about the flights flights to Vegas and stuff? Like, How does that work? Like, How do you, at any point when you're in college... That's on Thursday when you want to make some extra money on the weekend. Oh, okay, dancing. No, valet parking. Valet parking. Sure. Cocktail waitressing. I just, how dare you judge in that manner right out of the gate? I meant performance dance. Yeah, like like, like Cirque du Soleil, right? Like dress up like a River lion, dance. yeah, like a flat lady. Yeah, because it takes talent to do that. That kind of stuff. But I just, I just look and I go, what? Why do you? You're think not so? like thirty. What? No one graduates there in four years for. That's a another good point. Not because it's Yale. It, there's just a lot going on. Yale of the Southwest. I did. Gra- yeah, it is the Yale of the Southwest. It's the Yale of Arizona. And turquoise is your favorite color. Turquoise is our favorite color. I uh, I graduated in four years. That's because you're smart. You, you are smart. I, I walk around here and I go, if someone in the hallway says, Matt Berry, that guy's an idiot. I go, you know what? I don't think that's true. I think he's Do you smart. hop in? Yeah, I jump do you, in. Now, do you verbally say that or do you push them against the wall first and say, that's not true? That's not cool. Assault is not cool. Can we get, can we, if someone's listening out there at, at Arizona State, what's the, what's the number to call into this program? Uh, Triple H ESPN. Is that right? Yeah. All we right. want to know. We want to. We want to know if you're real or not. Just call. But, but give us play by play a palm walk. That's All right. right. <laughs> I want to take a side here, but I don't know what to do. It's a sports dispute. It's a beef that's going on right now, and these happen all the time. And I wrote down a little bit of a list. But this one could be perhaps off the radar if you're not locked into the New York City thing day to day. But the Jets, who used to have Brandon Marshall, now he's on the Giants. We know Brandon Marshall, outspoken guy, receiver. He's been on a bunch of different teams. We also know his teammate Sheldon Richardson, defensive lineman, who. When he plays, man, he's really good. But he's been a bit of an issue off the field at times. If you remember him at all from Missouri, he was the guy that was like, oh, the SEC, we're going to go play old man football and all that stuff. Like, And then it was like, oh, wait a minute, isn't he the guy that got into a police chase when he was back home and the cops pulled him over and he pulled into somebody's driveway and they found out that there was a gun and some weed and also a kid in the back seat, which isn't – like if I'm going to get into a car chase, I like to leave the kids at home. Now – Sheldon Richardson was asked about the locker room, and he said, quote, the locker room's a whole lot easier to get along with now, telling reporters. Asked to elaborate, he smiled and said, quote, man, oh man, y'all are thirsty. Let's just say I've got 15 reasons why it's better. Brandon Marshall wore number 15. Marshall wouldn't comment. These guys got into it back and forth. The question I'm going to ask you is, okay, the Sheldon Richardson resume I just gave you was brief, but pretty significant. We also know that Brandon Marshall hasn't had the greatest stops throughout his career. But once Brandon Marshall started coming around here a little bit more, I've met him twice, really liked him, started talking about his mental health issues and the challenges yep. and awareness and his fundraising. So he started to become more sympathetic. And you're like, before I knew you, I may have thought you were just a bad teammate. Now I've had some face time, understand where you're coming from. Maybe I'm more like, yeah, man. Could Sheldon Richardson be a bad dude and be right about Brandon Marshall, a guy that it feels like the public has started to become more supportive of? Yes, but just like Brandon Marshall could be a player that's misunderstood but actually be a good teammate. And we run into this all the time. I am one to lean towards a guy that tends to be a little mouthier in the locker room like Brandon Marshall who's had some disease of me issues with where it's all about him. But a guy who makes decisions off the field like Sheldon Richardson has and very questionable decisions but in trouble with the law, you immediately – I dismiss your word. I don't think you have any credibility to dictate what is and what isn't a good person inside a locker room because of decisions you've made off the field. What's Brandon Marshall's biggest issue when he was, air quotes, at When he his was worst? in Denver, it was pretty bad. 
And yeah, he I, was he's a even admitted. Petulant. He was. He had, look. People said that about Tio, and people said that about Des Bryant when he first came into the league. But sometimes it's an immaturity issue. I think Brandon Marshall's been deemed a worse teammate than certainly Des Bryant, and I, you know the To one. I don't know. It's a little debatable there. I, I guess what I'm trying to do, like, here's another one that comes up. All right. Who is Aaron Rodgers? Right. So when Jermich, when Jermichael Finley, who looked like he was going to be a pretty good t- tight end, mm-hmm. and it didn't really work out. When he starts knocking Aaron Rodgers, my instinct is to go, well, wait a minute, Aaron Rodgers is like the best quarterback in the league. Like, that can't, like, like, who's this guy? And then you start digging around a little bit more, and you're like, you know, a lot of guys don't get along with Aaron Rodgers. And it just feels weird to go, well, I'm going to take the tight end, the tight end that's not there, the tight end whose career, I know he's in the news now again, talking right. about how tough his, his career was and all that stuff. But it's so quick, it's so easy to just go, no, I'm going with the guy that's better, who's still there. I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. I'm just wondering how many times we're wrong just going with the guy that we have more public knowledge on when I think it comes to these these disputes. And the one thing you said that I that I think needs to resonate, you you sat down with Brandon Marsh, you got to know him a little bit. And briefly, so, right. But, brief, but, but more than I spent with Sheldon Richardson. Exactly. But that moment was enough for you to kind of just take it in a little bit and be like, you know what, maybe this guy is a little misunderstood. We had Reuben Foster in here when I was doing this show before the draft. And you hear all this stuff about Reuben Foster at Alabama. And then he sat in, in this studio with us, and we had a good conversation with him. He left, and we were both we, – we flipped on him. We you said, did? Absolutely. That's funny because when I watched, because I was off that week and I saw him do all his hits, Yeah, I didn't buy any of it. Oh, I think the, a lot of it were, were, were fibs. I think he <laughs> stretched the truth a little bit. But the way that – You liked him. You just liked the but guy. But the way that he was is a person. I liked the person. And I think that we can – we hear Sheldon Richardson say that the locker room was this, the locker room was that. Well, have we heard anybody talk about what he's like as a teammate? It's easy to pick on Brandon Marshall because he's gone and he's been picked on before. I think these public spats in locker rooms, just, they have to stop. Well, they're never going to stop, and sometimes I kind of like him. But I was just doing like, – the first thing I did is I go – We defaulted. Well, I, I go, hey, I got Brandon Marshall's side on this one. That's what I did. And then I go, well, wait a minute. He's been a problem before, and just because he's talking about issues that we're more aware of – does that mean I have to completely diss Sheldon Richardson's point because Sheldon Richardson's public stuff isn't that great? Like Ben Roethlisberger, if there's any dispute, like oh, the one guy feels this way, this guy feels, you know, Ben Roethlisberger feels the other way, I'm always going to take the other guy's side. Why? That's not fair. It's completely unfair. Have you had a gonna, cup of coffee with I'm Ben doing Roethlisberger? It. I don't want to. If he called you right now. Let's, to do what? Let's go get an iced cappuccino. He blocked me on Twitter. We can't, we can't even. You got blocked by Roethlisberger? You didn't? Dude, anybody who's anybody in this game is getting blocked by Roethlisberger. You better check. Throw that number back out. Roethlisberger, call in. We have No, you need to check and see if Roethlisberger has blocked you. At Big Ben 7, I think. At Big Ben 7, I'll check now. If you're not blocked, dude, You'd you better to talk have, to your agent. Well, you, you have to have followers. To, I don't have followers. Underscore. Big, at uh, at the Big fake, Ben? The fake one. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it's going to come up at some point. This is we should. Do we have any music for anticipation? Let's see if I'm blocked. All right. Is he, he has a legitimate account. He does, and he blocked like... A couple thousand media members. Just Big randomly. Benji got it. Yep, got it. Uh, oh, looks like you're not blocked. Not blocked. See, I'm taking Ben's side now. That's good. Matt Berry with us here, the Rosillo Show, Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. We were just talking about Tempe and the ASU presence on IG, and a dude called in. So this may have backfired a bit, <laughs> but let's go to Ryan and Tempe. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Great. Uh, yeah, big uh, watcher of the show and just heard you guys talking about Tempe and it's all, it's all real. The hype is real. Okay, but how do you compete with just, like you sound like a regular guy, Ryan. You're at home. You're watching the Rosillo show. We appreciate that. How do you compete with the other guys at ASU, like these older dudes, like flying your, stu- your female student body to, to Cabo and to, to all these places? Like, how do you compete with that? Well, one, there's just, there's so many of them. <laughs> So like <laughs> Ryan's right. There's, they're like it's it's real. Like they are everywhere. So it's but insane. You're having a great time. Like, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Graduated in six years. Like he's oh, right. Quick. You don't graduate in four. Congratulations. That's right. six year degree. Look, Ryan. You know what, Ryan? Let's end on a high note. That was good. That was perfect. <laughs> you don't right, need to add good. anything else to it. If we had a shirt, we'd send you one. He was he was so earnest. Graduated in six years. Got my paper. And a lot of guys that graduate in six years, they're bummed about it. He's not. Take a tip from Ryan. My roommate, my freshman roommate, Boomer, I, and I don't care that he cares, I'm going to say this, he got put on academic probation out of the first semester of our freshman year. That's hard to do. It is hard to do. It is. 
but some have done it. Field Yates is next. Kaepernick to the Seahawks, the latest yeah, on that. Hit in six years. It's ESPN Radio. Get you the diploma. I have a personal dilemma that I want to share with everybody, and it's, it's breaking a rule that I don't like when it's broken with me, but I may break it for the benefit of everyone here on the show. And oh, just no. Everyone that listens. We got Matt Berry with us today. It's a Rosillo show. So I'll do that in a little bit later, right? At the end of this hour. Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine okay. with it. I'm just about to do something I really am going to be a complete hypocrite if I do it. Also, top of next hour, we just had Dave McMenamin sound roll in from Kyrie Irving and kind of talking about like the future, big picture stuff. It's really, really good stuff. So we're going to start the second hour on that. Like Kyrie Erdy kind of accepting at what my future role may be and how tough this has been with LeBron. So kind of cool there. we got Field Yates with us here on the Rosillo Show, presented by Progressive Insurance. Again, Matt Berry with us on ESPN Radio. So first news item, I want to get to this because you were on Sports Center this morning talking about Gronk restructures the deal. Uh, he's going to become or could become the highest paid tight end in sports. What does this really mean? It means that uh, Gronk cannot at all complain about a contract, and not to say that he would, but uh, for those who are saying, well, Gronk is underpaid when Gronk plays like Gronk can play, the answer is that may be true at $5.25 million, but now he's got the chance to earn up to $10.75 million. And from the Patriots' perspective, you keep arguably their second best player behind Tom Brady, Very happy. It's strong labor relations for the potential of another deal with Gronk down the line. And the team had some flexibility. They have a very healthy cap situation. That doesn't mean that you should just be, you know, gratuitously passing out raises to every single player. But for someone like Gronk, who they've been trying to get something done with for a while, this is sort of a good placeholder contract for this season. Okay, let me understand this then, because I think in the service people go, wait a minute, this guy's hurt all the time. You just won a Super Bowl without him. Yep. Look, I'm with you. I love him. He's great. We know how good he is. But why do you make him the highest paid tight end? Why do you double the salary? Like, there has to be another play here. A lot of this is incentive. It isn't just a straight 10 plus million. And why would that help them work out a negotiation, which I think at times has been described as tenuous, the relationship between the family and the team? Think of it this way. So he's got three years left on his deal right now. Obviously, this new one has been beefed up to earn up to $10.75 million if he's either a, an all pro player this year or plays 90% of the plays. So if he's catches. him, he'll get his money. If he's him, he'll get his money. But here's the thing. So the Patriots, generally speaking, don't, and I think most NFL teams are this way, don't consider extensions more than two years out from a player's current deal expiring. So let's say the Patriots were thinking about a new deal for Gronk beyond the current contract. A year from now, they can go to Gronk, and if Gronk either has a very good but not great season or if he's hurt again like they can never have a situation where Gronk says like hey you guys have you know could perpetually lowballed me like it's time for me to get mine Gronk has been well compensated by the Patriots they gave him the first extension after just two seasons and for the second time they've restructured this current deal and in both cases it's been an amicable situation for each side this just seems very anti-patriot it's they, different look they what what they do is they they get a guy that's that's hit the peak of his career and perhaps still in his prime, and then as they see the window maybe a year or two down the road going closing a little bit, they tend to get rid of guys two years early rather than two years late. And for a guy that hasn't played a complete season since 2011, this just seems to me a very unpatriot thing to do. The Patriots have had a couple of unique situations with Gronk that are different from any other. There was a time where the team and the player released a joint statement about the update of his injury status, which the Patriots, as we all know, don't talk about injuries, period. Uh, but they had, you know, they, they felt compelled to release a statement in conjunction with Gronk. So I don't want to say that Gronk plays by different rules, but there is some precedent for the Patriots to have a little bit of a different dynamic in play with Gronk than they do with other players. You know, I don't, I don't want to say that, you know, I think they, they abide by, you know, there's an old adage, right? Uh, you don't have to treat everybody equally, but treat everybody fairly, right? right? And so with Gronk, they feel as though this is fair treatment, even if it's different. You know, not if not, not every player who's going into the final year or an underpaid year on their deal gets a raise in New England. It's pretty uncommon. I mean, Ninkovich got one a couple of years, a defensive end, Rob Ninkovich, but it's far more typical for the team, you're right, to be forward thinking and, you know, trade a player versus And they just won without him. Right. They just and they went I believe it was nine and zero with an average scoring margin of nineteen point two points per game in the games that he missed after that last injury last season. Field Yates, Matt Berry, the Rosilla Show at ESPN Radio. Headline right now up on ESPN.com just came up. Colin Kaepernick visiting with the Seahawks. Yep. What do we need to know about this? Uh, this is, I don't want to say it's it's just due diligence, but certainly that's a part of it. It's ex- exploring this player and 
Uh, we know a little bit of what he looks like on the football field. Obviously, we've seen him start for a long time, but I don't think anybody would say that last year was, even though the numbers were okay, was you know the apex of Colin Kaepernick. Obviously, that was in previous seasons. So there is familiarity in terms of where he's at physically, and I know everybody wants to make this about you know being once it seems to make uh, one want it to be being a black ball situation it's not that but we'd be naive if we don't think there is an ex- exploration of how does he fit into our locker room that's a big part of it i mean he he drives opinions some very positive some very negative you got to figure out who this player really is and until you actually sit down and meet with that player it's hard to know for sure all right here's my deal with Colin Kaepernick okay. i i'm i'm one of those on the side of i don't care what the guy stands for on and off the field i just don't i'm going to go just just football player in general is it possible that Colin Kaepernick hit his peak because Jim Harbaugh is just a good quarterback coach was that 3 years with Harbaugh the uh, best of Colin is he just not uh, a think, good player? If anybody thought there was better than what we saw during those three years, he'd have a job right now. I mean, he was unbelievable. So maybe that's just it. Why do we keep having to peel back the layer of oh, it's because of this? He's being blackballed. He's just, maybe he's just not that good. Well, I tell you this: I uh, this situation has uh, resulted in more unsolicited messages, texts, or calls from people around the league than one that I can remember in quite some time. And some people will, will reach out and just say. You guys, sort of speaking about the media in general, have completely overthought this. And the reason would be he can't. They say well, he can't play, or some say, "Hey, you know, like it, it may not be about performance. It may be like, do you even know how much he wants to get paid? Like, if is he is he asking for more money than you would typically pay a backup quarterback? Is it, hey, the fit's just not there? You know, we like him as a player, but we play an offense that wouldn't be as tailored to his skill set, which is why I think people keep pointing back to Seattle. They say this is a team that relies on a quarterback who can be a threat with his legs and uh, you know has a potentially very good running game. That wasn't the case last year, but for all those years before that, Seattle was excellent running the football. Speaking of white privilege, we have just learned <laughs> that you, Field, are are historically how far how many generations are going back like to five or six chinese grandmother there's like many many gen like great 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 i gotta go to like uh what's like family tree.com or something i think ancestry.com ancestry or you can do it the dna and so, me, yeah. so if we're talking about this in some real talk here you want the white privilege jokes to stop because of your heritage put an end to them because you were a, you you got a centerfold in, in Nantucket Weekly was that the yeah Nantucket that didn't help your brand at all. Well, see, here's the you thing: were wearing so your the origin of, colors, your vineyard vines. The origin of this conversation was I was saying to Brian, who's from obviously Martha's Vineyard, that doesn't I, help me either. That's right. Say, well, my dad is from Nan is from Hawaii, so going home to going to visit Hawaii is different, and it's still an amazing experience, but it's different than your traditional. Those are your going, people. Those are yeah. You well, you got to go and you know you right. spend time with family, and you, you know you do things that are great, but it's also different than going and sitting on a beach for seven straight days. I just am happy that we could introduce to America. Like, yes, Wesleyan. Yes, Lax. Yes. A, just a good size forty jacket, maybe a thirty eight. It's going to say forty. I say you're thirty eight. Thirty eight. Forty eight. Forty eight. But years. You know, yeah. just just back off because we're dealing. We got a lot of things going on. So here. to be clear, sitting here in this studio on the Rosillo Show, you're from where? Uh, originally. Originally, where are you from? Outside of Boston. Yeah. Give me the city. Give me your, Lincoln. Okay. Yeah. Where are you originally from? Martha's Vineyard. And I'm from Scottsdale. We nailed it. Nailed it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Field. All right. Coming up next. By the way, Field Yates giving you the straight talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. An update on the guy who tries to move a mountain he cannot move. I'm going to break a rule by videotaping this guy so you can see it. It's ESPN Radio. With Matt Barry today, the Ryan Rosillo Show, brought to you by ZipRecruiter.com. Try it for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Russ. That's R-U-S-S. ZipRecruiter.com slash Russ. Before we get into this bit of a dilemma that i'm in it's really not that big of a deal i've had bigger problems than what i'm about to share with you and we changed things around a little bit so in under 10 minutes dave McMenamin, who sat down with kyrie irving after last night's epic 19 point run in that third quarter really kind of saved the Cavs in that game because lebron dealing with foul trouble which is something you almost never have to worry about if you're a Cavs fan but did ask kyrie this about the future dave McMenamin, espn kyrie uh, i'm not trying to put LeBron out the pasture by any means, but at some point he's spoken openly about this. He mentioned it to me in the second round. He said, you're going to be in the position to lead this franchise in your prime. 
do moments like this matter in that development, in that passing of the torch? We're going to get that answer from Kyrie because it's actually really, really like he opens up and says, yeah, I've been thinking about it. This and, hasn't been easy. And keep in mind, prior to LeBron coming back to Cleveland, now. Kyrie had that opportunity. Kyrie had a chance to kind of start to build this franchise into another layer after LeBron left for the first time. Yeah, and he's, he's, well. you know, it didn't go well at all. That's how they got Anthony Bennett. Yeah, right, right. And you know, he, he. By the way, did you see Anthony Bennett said in former Cavs number one pick that just didn't work out? He said he's going to get the last laugh this week. Why? I don't know. I didn't click on it. I just Do we think that there's a thirty for thirty or an E sixty coming on Anthony Bennett? It is weird to be that bad that quickly, and but, just out. I mean, it's Jamarcus Russell type territory. That was quick bad. And at least there in football, you can kind of say, well, with a quarterback, when it just doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Usually, the number one pick in the NBA draft, you get a little bit more than Anthony Bennett. You're a draft guy. I love the draft. I'm working on it right now in commercial breaks. I want to look back at that draft. It wasn't a great draft. But you probably could have done a little bit better than anything. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, too. Like, leading up that year, I had talked to people that I knew that really liked him. They're like, oh, man, Anthony Bennett, he figures it out. And then it was oh, the shoulder injury, and he's got asthma, and we don't know if he's a three or four. Here's what he is now. We're waiting. We're still waiting on that. I've mentioned this before uh, at one of the places that I'll, I'll check out. Yes, I have two gym memberships. One's open late. Maybe it makes me a loser. I, there's far worse things about me than having two gym memberships. All right? We won't get into those right now. All right. But there's a guy, and I've mentioned him once before, because I did this whole breakdown on which guys at the gym are like which NBA teams. That's, that's good radio. Yeah, and it worked. Yeah. It actually worked out. Okay. So I'm not going to do that all over again. But one of the guys that I brought up was a guy – He's 275 guy. And what he does is he puts 275 pounds on the bench. He tries to bench it once, and he can't even, he can barely take it off of the rack. Like, he has no shot. I don't think he can do 200 pounds. But he puts 275 on. And we all kind of noticed him now over the last few months, and we kind of look at him and we go, my God, he's doing it again. And he puts the 275, so that's 245s and a 25 on the outside. It's a lot of weight. He puts it out there, and he can lock it out as he takes it off of the top of the rack and he won't even bring it an inch down, and then he throws it back behind him, and then he gets up, and he'll always look at the weight like it's the weight's fault. And he'll, like, shake his head, he'll scratch it, and then he kind of, like, you know, pats his hands off like they got dirty somehow. It's like, he didn't sure. really do anything. Like the guy that misses something looks at his glove like it was the glove's fault. Right, or the guy that blows in his hands after an air ball. Right. Like, yeah, it was your, your hands were not warm enough. That's what happened. He looks at the weight like it's, it's the weight's fault, and one day he's getting it. And it continues to happen, and I've never seen him ever get close. And I want to film it and share it with everybody, but I hate when that kind of stuff happens because I've noticed people filming me at the gym before. And I'm like, And how's that go? Bad. Now, when you notice they're filming you, what do you do? I've said something. You have? Why? I go, what are you doing? Like, at that point, just if you know it's happening, go harder. Roll them. Yes, go yeah. harder. Roll just up really your shorts out. a little bit. Yeah, but you know what would happen. Grunt a little harder. So do I need to do this? Do I, I know everybody's going to say, yeah, Pixar didn't happen. Like, share it with everybody. I almost want to talk to him and go, hey, I've noticed you the last few months. You're not even close. Like, how do you not know he's, even close. How do you know he's not trolling you? Like, I bet I can get Rasilla to film me. <laughs> well, he's doing a great job. What if this guy's like Mr. Clean and could just yank weights all over the place, and he's waiting for you to do this, and then he's going to throw up 20, put the bar down, give you two middle fingers, and walk out of the gym? It's like a Jim Halpert level joke then because it's taking forever. So for months, and he just sees me, he goes, up. Oh, time to throw on 275, see if Rosilla films me today. Nope. Well, until next time, sir. He might listen. He's waiting for you. No, I've watched his routine. He's in good shape. He's strong, but he just throws a ton of weight on something. He can't do it. I don't know what to do. Maybe, maybe I should. Maybe it's the creatine. Maybe I should worry about my own weights. All right, Kyrie Irving <laughs> on the future without LeBron. Very honest. That's next.